Welcome to the second tutorial in our PIC 18F 14K 50C based tutorial series. We are talking about our most basic program today. We are going to do our Hello World or our Blinky program, which is the hardware equivalent of a Hello World program. So today, the only thing we are going to be doing is we're going to be turning this LED on, uh, on and off uh, once per second. And um, yeah, that's about it. Now the challenge here isn't going to be necessarily doing this. It's going to be for the first time getting our IDE to work properly, making sure that the IDE and the compiler are actually communicating properly. Make sure that the IDE is communicating properly with the programmer, making sure that we have all of our settings squared away, which we won't. Uh, just doing this is like, oh, I got this. Oh, this didn't work. Oh yeah, I forgot to do this. Oh yeah, this, and it's just, something where you go through, make sure you check those boxes, get everything working. And once you've got it working, then you can do the more interesting projects. But first, let's go over this very basic schematic. So I will jump over here. So this schematic is basically just pulling the schematic that we have in the data sheet and connecting up the picket header and also the LED in series with the resistor. And that is it. However, if you joined us with our PIC 10F200 series, you might look at this and think, wow, this is a really complicated microcontroller because there's these pins with very, very long names. And at first it can be overwhelming, but everything is broken down quite simply. And I'll just briefly go over it just to kind of take away that intimidation factor because it's really not that difficult. As we are looking at the schematic here, we've got DD1. You look at pins one and 20 and immediately you just see that's power and that's ground. That's all you have to worry about. And then on pin two, you see the IOCA5, OSC1, clock in, RA5, and just, okay. So that's basically saying this pin can be used as an external interrupt. It can be used as a clock in or as RA5 as a GPIO. That's all it's saying. And then you look at pin three and you notice, oh, look, you see oscillator two, you see clock out, you see RA4. And already, oh, I know what half of these things are. Pin four, another external interrupt, um, but also you have your VPP, so it's your programming pin. So it's one of the things which you can see that it's hooked up to the picket. So again, it might be intimidating at first to see all of these things, but really all they're doing is they're saying this pin can do this, 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 or this and you just get to choose which one you want. The AN7, AN8, AN9, that's just saying that you can configure those as analog pins, analog inputs. And it's really quite straightforward. So don't let that intimidate you. It's just something where you look at it and say, all right, I want this particular feature. And frankly, once you change the settings to use only that feature, you can disregard the rest of it. Now, that being said, you do need to make sure you can disable the rest of the settings and use just that one setting. And that can be a bit of a challenge sometimes, and it can be very straightforward at other times. It just depends. Today is gonna to be very, very straightforward. But that's really all we need to look at with the schematic. We see that the picket four is connected, and we see on pin 16 that we have our series resistor and our LED going to ground. And that's about it. So. The schematics on this one is extremely straightforward. And as we get into the program itself, you're going to see that it is also extremely straightforward. So now that we know how this is physically set up, before we get into the code, let's actually get the project set up. Now we've done this in previous tutorials, um, not this series. So if you've already done this, this might be a little bit of an overkill, but at the same time, it's always good to refresh. So let's jump in and create our new Blinky project in MPLAB X IDE. Okay, so when we jump into here, you'll notice that MP Lab XIDE has this splash page, and I don't like these splash pages for whatever reason. I don't know why Microchip feels like they have to put that in. So I just get rid of it because I think it is messy, but I went up and I hit new file. That is not what I want to do. I want to hit cancel, and then I want to actually create a new project. So there's that right there, or I can go over here to create a new project entirely. So ever since microchip bought, uh, bought out Atmel, things got a little bit more complicated because you can import Atmel Studio projects and things like that, but we don't need to do anything that complicated. We are just creating a standalone project. So we click standalone project, go to next. Now, since we are using the PIC 18F14K50, let's go to the advanced 8-bit MCUs, and then we just have to go down and choose our device, which See if we can find it. There we go. 
And if you were unable to find this exact device and decided to go with one of the other ones that Sergey recommended, please choose the appropriate one for that. But since I do have the 18F14K50, I'm going to select that. And I'm also using the Picket 4, which it already detects it. So that was actually fortunate. I was glad that it worked the first time I tried it. Now we go to next. We are not going to worry about debugging at the moment, so just go ahead and skip it. Now we need to select the compiler. And if you notice, we skipped over the select, select plugin board. That's okay, we don't need it. But now we need to choose our compiler since we are using C and we previously downloaded the XC8 compiler in the last tutorial. Let's just select it and move on. If you do have an extra one, if you have multiple copies because you've used this before and you just are jumping into this series, just choose whichever one you want. It's probably just going to be the latest one. It doesn't really matter that much as long as it's the XC8 version. Okay, let's call this Blinky because that's exciting. Project location, we'll just keep it there. Project folder, keep everything in the same folder. I'm going to set it as the main project and I'm going to keep the encoding as the same because I've never needed to change that and neither has Sergey, so I'm not messing with it. We then click finish and here we go. Now, nothing happens in this main window because I closed that other window, but we have the project over here on the left. And then we have a bit of a dashboard here giving us some more information about our memory usage and the tool chains we're using and things like that. So we've got a lot of good information here, but we are mainly going to be working up here. Now, you can look at this and say, oh, what am I supposed to do here? You can go into source files and you will want to right click on it and just say new main.c and I don't know why they say new main well, let's just call it main I'll have the extension of c in the project blinky and that will be the file created so we hit finish and voila here we are we have our most basic program that does absolutely nothing for us right now uh, it has the include file that actually is important here. And I don't know how much experience you have with C. If you don't have any experience, you might find this to be a little bit challenging. But if you have a little bit of experience, this should be pretty straightforward. However, if you don't, this include file basically creates a lot of definitions for you. And that will make more sense as I put in the actual code here. But it makes it so when you say, oh, well, I want to use RC6, well, if it doesn't know what RC6 is, it doesn't know what it is. So it has to have this reference where when you type in RC6, it goes into that XC.H and says, oh, RC6 is this pin, and it makes those connections for you and hugely simplifies things. And again, we'll go over that once we pull in the project, which let's do that now. Okay, so I just deleted everything, got rid of the little comment section up in the top and pasted in the uh, the example that Sergey has given us. So let's go over it very briefly, but we actually need to do a couple more changes before we can do this because this is the code, but there's some configuration both that needs to be done in the code and also some property settings that need to be changed in MPLAB XIDE or we're going to get all sorts of errors, which I think I'll actually get to the point where we have the errors and then show you how to overcome them, even though that can be kind of frustrating. All right, so this is our very, very basic Blinky project. So at the first line, you see that we have dis defined the crystal frequency as one megahertz, one zero 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 zero. There we go. And we need that because we are going to be using the delay on line 11 of 500 milliseconds. And so if our crystal frequency, if our basically our oscillator isn't working at one megahertz, that's gonna throw off our delay by however much off. If you, your frequency is half as long, well, then the period is going to be twice as long. So just to make it so that that delay milliseconds function is correct, we need to have the proper definition up here. Now, I already mentioned the include file on line three, so we don't need to go over that again. And again, if you're at all familiar with C, you will recognize the void main function with the void um, output. So it doesn't take anything in and doesn't have any parameters it receives or um, I'm forgetting the exact word gives out shoots out I don't 
I don't remember. But it doesn't take anything and doesn't uh, kick anything out. But this is our main function. This is what we have going on. And line 8 is our while loop. So basically everything between lines 9 and 12 will be repeated forever. And then line 7 is the probably, oh, well, I guess there's two, two lines here. 7 and 10 that can be complicated. But 7 is the only line that we will only run once in our main function. If you remember from any previous experience with microcontrollers, Tris in microchip or PIC microcontrollers usually is referring to the settings on whether or not it is going to be an input pin or an output pin. So Tris C0 in this case is actually referring to pin RC0, which if we look back at that uh, pin diagram, you will see that on pin 16, that is pin RC0. And so basically we're saying, hey, RC0, we want it to be an output. We don't want it to be receiving information. We want it to be outputting information by toggling this LED. And this is how it's done. Now, this is pretty straightforward in concept of just, hey, if you want this to be an output, set this tr associated trist bit to zero. If you want it to be an input, set it to one. But you can actually do it a couple of different ways. And it's one of those things that by having more flexibility, it does add confusion. Sergey covers this more in his written tutorial. It's probably better to go over it there because he shows how it's all defined in that header file. Um, but for right now, you can just know that pin seven, or excuse me, line seven is simply setting RC0, which our resistor is connected to as an output. So once it's sets it as an output, we jump into that while loop from 7 to 12. And what happens on pin 10 is interesting. So we have lat C bits, and lat is referring to latching. So you have your port and your latch when you're talking about your pins. And your latch is basically where you say, I want you to be a 1 or a 0 as an output. But then your port actually says, when you read your port, it's your actual current settings. Gonna double check, yep, make sure that's right. Now you may think, okay, if, if I say this is an output, wouldn't it always be an output? Well, this is one of those things where there's a little bit of lag sometimes in reality, where you might, and this doesn't come up often, but it does sometimes, and it really messes you up when it does. It comes up where you'll say, hey, I want this bit to be one. And so you use your lat command, say, set this to one, and then you immediately tell something else to use that state, but it's pulling off of the actual voltage level and it takes some time to ramp up or it runs some other commands before it gets to that or something along those lines. And so with your latch, just know that that's you saying, I want it to be high or low. But if you ever want to see what the actual real state is right now, that's where you use port. Um, again, Sergey goes into a lot of great depth on that, but it's a very strange and subtle difference between the two. And most of the time, it won't matter, but every once in a while, it can bite you in the butt. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. So in this case, what it's basically doing is it's saying, hey, look at the RC0 pin, and then using that care equal sign, which means XOR basically. So. I don't know how familiar you are with digital either, but XOR is when you have two inputs. If you have a 0, 0, then your output's a 0, and a 1, 1, your output's a 0. But if you have a 0, 1, your output's a 1, or a 1, 0, your output's a 1. So in this case, if you are wanting to toggle something, you can say, take what's currently there, compare it to 1, or XOR it with 1, and then output the result of that back to that register. So, like I said, if your current state is zero, if you XOR it with one, your output's gonna be one. If your current state is one, if you XOR it with one, your output's gonna be zero. So that caret equals sign, that XOR, is just a really easy way to toggle the output. So in this while loop, all you're doing is in line 10, you're saying, look at the state, XOR it with one, and swap it, and then in line 11, wait a half a second. And then it goes back, toggles it, waits a half a second, goes back, toggles it, waits a half a second, and that's it. That is the entirety of the program itself. Again, very straightforward. 
once you know each of those bits. And um, hopefully now you do, so it's good to go. All right, so I said we had some other things that we needed to take care of before we could actually use this. As you can see here, I am powering the circuit via my Picket 4, so I need to set it up in my software to make sure that it knows that I'm creating power or providing power from my Picket 4 and not from my external power supply. So I feel like they've made this even harder to find for whatever reason. I remember this being more simple um, a couple of years ago when I was doing something with a PIC, PIC 16F, but you actually just go to your project and you right click on it and you go to properties. And so as you load the project properties, you will see there's a lot of stuff going on here and it can be a bit overwhelming. So let's just focus on what we're trying to do here. And all we're trying to do is figure out the power to our device. And that's gonna come through our Picket 4. Now you need to go to your option categories and then go to power. And then you need to say, let's power the target circuit from our Picket 4 and then let's change our voltage level. So this should be able to go up to five volts, but you might have an error and we don't necessarily need five volts right now. So I'm just gonna bump it up to 4.75 to avoid any chance of an error. And then we hit okay. And that will make it so that the Picket 4 provides power to this circuit, very straightforward. And um, I said that I might go through and make it pop up that error just to show you what it looks like. And I didn't, I'm sorry about that. But if you do get something popping up saying, hey, you said that you're gonna be providing an external power to your circuit and you didn't, that's where you go in and that's where you change it. Very common problem. So that's where you do it, go take care of it. Now, the other problem is, is in, in its current configuration, it won't, um, it won't have a clock. Its typical configuration is it's expecting an external oscillator to have it run, even though in line one, we define the crystal frequency as 1000 megahertz. Very, very strange here, but we can change that quite quickly by going up to production up in the top and then set configuration bits. Now there's actually three things that we need to change here. So first is this F OS, so our frequency oscillator. Let's change that from an external RC oscillator to an internal RC oscillator. And then we will wanna go and work on our watchdog timer. So right now we do not want to have our watchdog timer enabled. We want it to be controlled by the SWD TEN bit. So let's just go through and do that. And now this last thing that we're gonna change is actually kind of confusing. So this LVP, the low voltage programming, we are going to disable that. And the reason why we do that is it didn't work without that. We don't know why. Um, but as soon as you disable that, then you are good to go. So now we're gonna take this and we're gonna generate source code to output. So you click on that and it creates this little program or this little code block down here that we select, copy, and then make our simple, straightforward program quite a bit longer. So as you can see up here at the top, it's saying the configuration bit settings, and then we have all of these configuration things, and it's good to double check to make sure that the bits are actually doing what they want, what you want them to do. So we do have the internal RC oscillator, and the watchdog timer enable is off as well. So it looks like everything's good. Strangely, it creates another include with the xc.h, so we can delete that and not worry about that at all. And now we are finally ready. So if I didn't forget anything, which we'll see what happens, I should be able to make and program the device and my LED should start blinking. So hit the button, everything's going, build successful, connecting to programmer. Ah, yes, and then the caution check that the device selected is the same that is physically attached. I like to keep this up even though it's annoying just because I don't want to forget and accidentally fry an ultrasonic sensor or something along those lines. So this is a good time to double check, make sure that everything connected to the circuit is at least, well, five volts compliant and not going to burn up. So let's continue, okay. Programming verifying complete. And I don't know if the main camera can catch that, but this LED is now blinking. So we were able to successfully work through the entire process to make a very, very straightforward project that simply turns the LED on for a half second, then turns it off for a half second. 
This was our hello world. This is our blinky. We now are ready to move on to the much more interesting and much more challenging projects that Sergey has in store for us. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, definitely go out, go out and check the written tutorial that Sergey put together because it is really in-depth and, as always, extremely useful and entertaining. So if you found this useful or interesting, give this video a like, subscribe to our channel, and we will catch you in the next one.